people just say like you know call Aboriginal like Abos, boom. Yeah, like, all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's like full on like just and all the time. And it's acceptable. Yeah, they just said it. Abos. I, just, I yeah, find it such yeah. a foul word. Yeah. In that way, there is a huge distinction between mm. what's happened in Australia yeah. and what's happened in New oh, Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah. Today I feel full to the brim with new information and it's sort of digesting right now. Um, I feel so fortunate because we were taken into another time, another space and for the first time in my whole life I was actually very methodically given an explanation of how people in that time, Māori, used to see or still see the world. My Ngāti Puro um, whakapapa on my, through my mother's side has been very intriguing to me because I wasn't brought up in a Māori setting and it was my grandmother's generation who were told do not speak Māori and do not go to the marae and things like that and um, it's actually been up to everyone of our generation to regain that connection with our heritage, with the land, with the past. My ethnicity has been a large part of my work because you know, being a fruit salad, as they say, um, I sort of bring elements of all these different cultures into, say, a portrait where there might be traditional Māori elements such as a huia feather or a moko, which is, you know, so symbolic and almost regal. But then I add things that are sort of European in terms of the red hair and um, I am just a big mixture. I'm trying to find an identity on a fundamental level, like on a spiritual level, which combines all those things. I was just amazed the fact that there's two completely different translations mm. of the of the treaty, and and also the fact that there is mm. a deep pain exactly. right right there, and, and I think a lot of non Maori in, in New Zealand in general kind of dismiss it, you know, because there the, there is no they don't have the understanding of, it, and it's like ah, oh, you know, that's in the past. My dad's from New Zealand. You know, he's got a farm upbringing. When he was 21, he had enough of the farm. He went into Southeast Asia and pretty much never left. Um, but that's where he met my mum. My mother's Cambodian, an English teacher in the capital of Cambodia. And then they got married. And like a few months later was uh, when the Khmer Rouge had, had entered into the capital. All this crazy stuff happened and uh, lots of my mum's uh, aunties and uncles were all murdered. You know, she lost her, her parents. It was a mass genocide. I was born in New Zealand, but for me that's always affected me in some ways. I mean, I can't speak Cambodian, but that has had an impact. My view on the world and also, you know, the way I, I paint. For me, I wanted to reach out to, to that culture side of what's part of my blood, really. No, you're right. Mm. This is that panelling kind of concept. Mm. That's another... I like that, I like the <coughs> qualities that... Those are screens. Yeah. See, something like that, that's quite large and elaborate. And that would take more than a day and a bit to do. It's pretty much a blank canvas in terms of my knowledge and understanding. Um, what I now want to go and do is reflect on what I've um, heard and seen and really looking forward to working with Kura. Um, and just, yeah, from, from, the, from this point on, it's going to be a great process journey yeah. together. <laughs> I'm married to Lyle. He's been serving in the New Zealand Navy for over 20 years, so um, we met playing sport, got three children. I guess my work ethic and the way that I work is, has quite an orderly German way to it. But you know, in terms of like I'm methodical, I'm very disciplined in how I work and I'm quite a structured person and, 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 and so forth. So it's probably the blend comes there, not so much in, perhaps with the imagery of the German side. The imagery is predominantly Pacific, but it is Tongan influenced. The discussions this, uh, today have been really good for me yeah. and um, sharing with the others too. I think my weariness might have been because I was 
wondering where they were at. I started painting in 1985. I used the figurative image of Fukaido, of carvings of the Po, uh, working with issues from the treaty, about the um, influence of Christianity, the uh, Māori, uh, the life force, the spiritual thing that we hold close to us as Māori, you know, the way that we need to be protected or the way that we protect ourselves. One of the most important things I've done for myself is to have Tai Chi in my life. I'm in my 13th year of Tai Chi with this particular discipline. It makes me see the world in a different way. Some of the principles of Tai Chi are very applicable to art. Tai Chi is about dualities, it deals with yin and yang. There's no way you can hurry. <laughs> I think they're fairly typical of the people in this land, that there is a huge chasm of understanding on some fairly basic things, whether it's the treaty, the declaration of independence, whether it's the basic Māori perception of the world. And what I'm hoping is that the art that they will produce will be part of telling that story in, in a different way. This is the wall that um, me, two guys that I know, have worked out a plan to do this wall together. This is an example of you know how, how we collaborate. I mean, and I kind of sat back, like while they outlined this. You know, we sort of went back and forth, really. We kind of keep planning it throughout the day. Yeah, and it took two Sundays to do. It. Two Sundays. It's pretty awesome seeing it at this scale. When I paint, you know, on the canvas and that, you know, I always take my time. You know, there's a lot of detail at, at hand, and it actually takes a lot longer to do smaller, but oh, bigger is kind of. Okay. Bigger is faster, yeah. big strokes, and you know, I just do a lot of filling in. Well, I'm like blown away. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, I'm glad you did like it. So, yeah, you know, of course. That's, that's the important thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sort of working together. It's really cool to see it like in real life, in the flesh, yeah. yeah. This one, um, I'm working on this one at the moment. Just, oh, I've been working okay. on it for ages, just yeah. doing some detail. Yeah. Sort of woke up one yeah. morning and um, had this vision of a Lord of the Rings type tower mm. and a cigarette. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just thinking like how how we would work together and that's and I, I mean I have a few that's ideas yeah yeah works. yeah I definitely have ideas you would paint your your figures or you know whatever it may be and I would work around it I've been thinking about concepts but they're mostly like information rather than um, mm. visual symbols but I think mm. it's better like the spiral mm. yep. of transcendence mm. and it's such a big thing and but we could get lost you know trying to really look into it too much mm. if we can visually draw something into people that even that people don't know much about the treaty either they might come in and go oh well wow, that's actually really cool like and they might mm. try and look into it even more and, and learn for themselves yeah. oh i haven't been in touch with Dagma. she hasn't been in touch with me either <laughs> but i'm no doubt we'd be um, thinking about what we're going to do time is going to be very tight for us for me there's a thinking process Visualising it in my head, I think we were thinking that we would produce a work each at this stage, but we never know. I think that it's, this is going to be an important thing for me to go home and do that. 
you know, to Waitangi. And uh, people may not remember me, but hey, I'm from there. <laughs> We kind of had a quite a good dialogue up at Pakri, so we've got a good gist of things, but the plan for us is working small, quite small, but the way we display it will become a larger piece. And I think we're both just trying to keep things quite simple in a way. I think that's kind of managing life too. I ended up in a, in a, in a quite a heated argument with my family the other night, you know, and it's like, I just think as like a backdrop to this whole thing, it's like this whole thing is, what it really does is challenge, it's challenging me to be proud of being Pākehā somehow, you know? And um, it's, yeah, it's not that easy to mix the guilt in with, the, with this kind of searching for a real, a proper identity. And that's what I'm seeing more and more, that over and above this whole project, there's like a need for an identity, you know, for Pākehā, I think, or for me anyway, this Pākehā. So I've got stuff to sort out in my family now, you know. So yeah, it's like kind of brought up. Yeah, I guess that's good. I think after we left Parkeri, it was an interesting time just to reflect on an intensive six hours. I think it was we were together kind of made me realise that what we're actually engaging is, in is actually producing something quite special that will probably become a taonga. In the last couple of days, the notion of the Declaration of Independence has become very important. For me, the Declaration has a bit more mana than what I previously thought. I thought it was just really something that was the precursor to the main event, but it's now been told to us that no, there needs to be a bit of upping for both. The Declaration of Independence is simply what it says. It was a statement by many of our rangatira that we were an independent people and that no one else was entitled to make decisions on our land except us. And it was, in a sense, the foundation um, for the treaty which followed five years later. Uh, we always talk about the Declaration of Independence as the real document. There are some in Ngāpui who think that the Treaty of Waitangi should be thrown out and discarded. Some of them see the treaty as a fraud. It is only designed by the Europeans to acquire Maori land. And they think that we should actually go back to the 1835 Declaration of Independence. What it talks about, uh, their independent, you know, their tinoranga, tiratanga, those kind of things. And I feel the same way about the Declaration of Independence. In fact, I feel more, uh, um, more uh, feelings, I have more feelings towards the Declaration of Independence than I do with the Treaty.